I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 93, The Selfie and Marshall McLuhan. Well, you might ask, how and what did Marshall McLuhan, who left this earth in 1980, what did he have to say about the selfie which, of course, didn't even exist until just a few years ago. The answer, I think, is very interesting. One of the real joys about understanding McLuhan is how what he wrote in the 50s, the 60s, and the 1970s so accurately predicted what our communications and media are doing today. And even better than that in some ways is the way that people who have read McLuhan come upon insights just in their everyday lives when they realize that, hey, this is something that McLuhan might have actually been talking about and something that McLuhan's ideas can help us understand and explain in hopefully a unique and valuable way. So, here's one of my favorite examples, a true story, something that happened to me about five or six months ago. I actually wrote a blog post about it. Now I'm finally getting around to doing a podcast episode about this. I posted a photo on Twitter of Marshall McLuhan, his son Eric McLuhan, and me that was taken in the late 1970s when I had organized a conference at Fairleigh Dickinson University, which is where I was teaching then. It's in Teaneck, New Jersey. The conference was about the Tetrad, or the Laws of the Media. Now, I'll get back to that in a moment. But one of the first people to comment on the photo was a current media theorist by the name of Ian Bogost, who said, where is the fourth? Now, in order to understand why Ian asked that question, now I'll explain to you what the tetrad or laws of the media are all about. And they go back to the mid to late 1970s when Marshall McLuhan began publishing some short articles and talking about what he was terming the laws of the media or laws of media. And in fact, there were four laws, hence the word tetrad, which is a way of saying four. A triad is three, a tetrad is four. And to give you an example, you could do a tetrad or apply McLuhan's laws of media to the radio and its impact and how people used it. And you can begin by looking at the first consequence or effect of radio. McLuhan called this first law, this first law of the tetrad, enhancement or amplification. And what the radio clearly does is it amplifies or enhances instant verbal acoustic communication across long distances. The second law has to do with what the new technology or media replaces, and McLuhan called this obsolescence. So you can clearly see that one of the things that radio obsolesced was the printed word in a variety of ways, say newspapers. They used to be the only way that people received news. Once radio came along uh, in the 1920s and really began expanding in the 1930s, people increasingly began to get their news, not just from newspapers, but from radio reports. 
or consider something like a sporting event. That's something where up until the introduction of radio, people had to read about what their favorite teams did in the newspaper, either later in the day or the next day. But what radio did is it also allowed people to listen to games as they were actually occurring in real time. The third law, or third part of the Tetrad, gets even more interesting because McLuhan said that every new medium or technology, first of all, enhances something, second of all, obsolesces or eclipses something, something else, and third of all, retrieves some kind of communication which itself had been previously obsolesced. And so... Again, clearly, what radio does is it retrieves the spoken word. Now, the spoken word, of course, never disappeared. So it's not as if this retrieval was digging something up which had been out of use. The spoken word continued to be important and continues to be important right now. That's the way it's been throughout human history. But there's also no doubt that what the written word did is to some extent, in some cases, take emphasis away from the spoken word. For example, once upon a time, the spoken word was a more important commitment in a contractual legal sense than the written word. But after the printing press, for a variety of reasons, the written word became legally much more binding than the spoken word. So radio obviously retrieves the spoken word. Now in some ways the fourth law of the Tetrad or the fourth law in McLuhan's Laws of Media I think is probably the most interesting and fascinating because McLuhan said that eventually when a medium is pushed to its limits, meaning that it can't do any more as that medium. At that point, it flips into something else. And again, if you look at the history of radio, what happened with radio eventually? Well, by the end of the 1940s, radio flipped into television which has a lot of similarities to radio. It's broadcast, it could be live, but it's very different from radio because you have a visual component. And in a way, what television does is it retrieves the visual component that radio had formerly obsolesced. Now, one of the nice things of the Tetrad is you can apply it to many different threads of media evolution. And that's something that I've been doing ever since I first wrote the preface to the publication of McLuhan's Laws of the Media back in 1977 in Etc. magazine. And I did that when I was actually a Ph.D. student at New York University. But one of the things that didn't exist back then was what you're listening to right now, the podcast. And so one of the things that radio reverses into is the podcast. Like television, the podcast has similarities with radio. It's the spoken word, it's sound. But unlike radio, anybody can do a podcast. I'm a professor, I'm an author, but I certainly have no radio professional experience. I've been on a few radio shows, actually probably dozens over the years, but I've never had my own radio show. I'm not a professional, I'm not considered a professional in the radio business. But that doesn't matter, because anybody can do a podcast. So one of the things that radio has recently flipped into is the podcast. So now let's get back to what Ian Begost was asking when I posted this photo of Marshall McLuhan, Eric McLuhan, and me taken at the conference at Fairleigh Dickinson University where we were considering the Tetrad 
and the laws of media back in 1977. Well, why was Ian Bogos saying, where is the fourth? He was talking about the Tetrad having four parts, and he only saw three people in the photograph. So that was a pretty clever question. But as soon as I read that question on Twitter, the answer popped into my head immediately. The fourth in that photograph is the selfie. Now, actually, somebody else, Mary Lou Bell, one of my students, took that photograph. But nowadays, you can clearly see that the photograph has flipped into the selfie. So let's do a tetrad for the photograph. What does it enhance or amplify? Well, capturing the visual world as it actually is. And that clearly points at what the photograph obsolesces, the painting, in which what is on the painting is dependent on the talent of the painter. In contrast to the photograph where the photographer has to have some talent, but the essence of the photograph is just the purely originally photochemical process, now digital process, in which the light bounces off the real world or whatever you are taking a photograph of, and you then have a photograph. So the painter, the pen and ink sketcher, is obsolesced by the photograph and by the photographer. Well, what does the photograph and the photographer retrieve, which have been previously lost? Well, you can look into a pool of water. And in fact, McLuhan talked about this when he talked about the Greek myth of Narcissus, who stared at his reflection in a crystal clear pool of water. That's in effect what a photograph is retrieving, because that's not an artist's interpretation, that's an actual reflection of the world. And so we get to the end. What does the photograph, let's even say the still photograph, what does it flip into? Well, over the years, it's flipped into many things. It's flipped into motion pictures. It's flipped into the Kodak photograph which could be taken by anyone. The first photographs were only taken by professional photographers. It flipped into the Polaroid, which is an instant photograph. And of course, it's flipped very recently into the photographs that we all take with our phones. But I think the selfie most epitomizes what the photograph has currently flipped into. Because, as we all know, millions of photographs are now taken by simply pointing the camera in our smartphone at ourselves. And so that's what the photographer, I think, has flipped into. Anyway, you can read more about McLuhan and the Tetrad uh, in many places, I'll recommend one of my books, Digital McLuhan, A Guide to the Information Millennium, which I wrote back in 1999. You'll find a link to that on the podcast page, uh, which is Light On, Light Through, L-I-G-H-T-O-N, L-I-G-H-T-T-H-R-O-U-G-H dot com. And by the way, light on, light through is a term I also got from McLuhan. So, if you ever have a chance, read not only my books and other books about McLuhan, but read some of McLuhan's original works themselves. Uh, some people find them a little hard to get into, but if you give them some time, you'll be rewarded by a cornucopia of insights and tools that we can use to help make sense of our rapidly evolving media age. The Light on Light Through podcast.
Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries.